On April 22, 1993, the U.S. Congress announced its plans to increase the oversight of the Federal Communications Commission, the regulator of television programming. Many legislators were concerned that the agency was not doing enough to curtail violence seen by children on network TV. A year prior, in 1992, the American Psychological Association had released a report estimating that a child would witness 100,000 acts of violence and 8,000 murders on television by the age of 10. This led to an outcry from parents and citizens concerned about the consequences of such media, and many psychologists began speculating whether the children watching the violence would eventually replicate the behavior. This was bad news for the major American networks, but great news for Nickelodeon. Launching as Pinwheel in 1977 before being given its recognizable name in 1979, Nickelodeon was the first cable channel dedicated to children's programming. The network struggled for the first years of its existence, but found its stride in the mid-80s by airing shows such as You Can't Do That on Television and producing the first children's game show, Double Dare. Nickelodeon increased its production output, and in 1989, the network began producing the majority of its shows in a newly built studio within the soon-to-open Universal Studios Florida Park. By 1993, Nickelodeon was the most popular children's television network, with game shows accounting for a large portion of the channel's productions. After concerns were raised over the amount of violence on television, more parents began to migrate their kids to Nickelodeon and other children's networks, and more advertisers were beginning to realize how lucrative a pool of highly suggestible grade schoolers was. This perfect storm resulted in the golden era of children's programming, and on September 11, 1993, Nickelodeon would begin airing what would become the most memorable game show that they would produce. Legend. Of the Hidden Temple. Legends of the Hidden Temple was described as a combination of Indiana Jones and Jeopardy, with some American Gladiators influence as well. The show was advertised as the first game show that lets kids live out legendary adventures. Selena Goober, a children's marketing expert, predicted the show's success based off of the premise alone. Kids love game shows. They love anything related to testing their own abilities. They love to see kids winning prizes. They love to see kids their own age interact with other kids. And obviously, they love to have fun. So if this show has all of the ingredients, it will be successful. Legends of the Hidden Temple was produced by Stone Stanley Productions. The show was hosted by a then-unknown actor named Kirk Fogg and a talking stone head named Olmec, voiced and puppeteered by D. Bradley Baker, a voice actor with a long resume of animated shows. The game was separated into four parts, with six teams of two competing for the grand prize. The team names stayed the same for each episode. These were the Red Jaguars, the Blue Barracudas, the Green Monkeys, the Orange Iguanas, the Purple Parrots, and the Silver Snakes. Each team comprised of one boy and one girl between the ages of 11 and 15. After the intro, Olmec would introduce Kirk, who would then quickly explain the premise of the show before asking Olmec what today's legend was. Each show had a different story that would serve as the episode's title and theme. It would also be used throughout the different levels of gameplay. During the intro, Olmec would give the title of the tale to come. This included the name of a historical or fictional figure and an object of some kind. Some of these were classic tales, while others were a bit more obscure. The legend of the royal torque of Queen Boadicea, the mystical spellbook of the Imperial Wizard. Your quest is to find the walking stick of Harriet Tubman and bring it back here. The first challenge was the moat. Each team was tasked with crossing a small pool by a specific means. This could require swinging on a rope, using a raft, crossing a bridge, or whatever else the production team could come up with. Each team would typically have their own wrangler on the other side of the moat, making sure that they were navigating the challenge safely and fairly. This often resulted in the kids having to go back into the water to start over. Here come the silver snakes, the trying to get a Once both teams were across, they could then press their button and ring their gong. The first four teams to do this successfully moved on to the next round, while the other two teams were eliminated and sent home with a consolation prize. Didn't make it, but you're not gonna go away empty-handed. Here's what we've got for you. Get the hottest looks with LA Looks. For soft, curly styles, use LA Looks Frizz Control Gel. A savings bond from Hershey. Hershey syrup or chocolate milk mix. Today, people are packing light, refreshing Starkist tuna in pita's salads and subs. Starkist, a taste for the times. Charlie not included. The next round was the Steps of Knowledge. Here, Olmec would tell the episode's legend, with the kids listening carefully to the story. Once he was done, they would be quizzed over the information they were just given. The answers were multiple choice, and the teams rang in by pressing their foot on a stone on their step. They were not required to wait until all of the options were read, which could lead to some pretty awkward moments. Which of these people fought the Trojans in the Trojan War? The Romans? Silver Snakes! Paris! Incorrect. If a team answered a question correctly, they would move down to the next step. 
If they didn't, the other teams were given an opportunity to answer, and there was no punishment for guessing wrong. The first two teams to answer three questions correctly moved on to the next round, while the other two were eliminated and awarded with slightly more exciting consolation prizes. NBA Jam for Genesis! Super NES and Game Gear is now here with 54 of the hottest NBA stars and incredible skywalking slam dunks. Hush puppies, the most comfortable shoes in the whole wide world. Look at the entertaining fun you'll have when you strap on moon shoes. Super excitement is yours when you bounce higher than ever. After a commercial break, the show would come back to Kirk and the remaining two teams. Before the next round of challenges, Kirk would interview the four players, typically asking their name, age, and sometimes a fun fact about themselves. This was the peak of the show's awkwardness. And uh, I heard you like to dance. Yes. Um, well, I take jazz, tap, and ballet. Oh, really? Would you like to tap for us right now? No, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> a pitcher for uh, uh, what team? For the Yankees. Really? Not the New York Yankees? No. No, okay, not yet. I sing in my school chorus, and I also went to Allstate Chorus this past spring. Right, and what do you like to sing? Madonna. In chorus? No. Oh, all right. The Temple Games were a series of three one-minute challenges in which the teams would compete for the pendants of life. These were typically a test of speed, agility, and or prepubescent upper body strength. They were all themed after the show's legend, and the type of challenge varied. The tough part about this game is getting up. Whoa, Green Monkeys look tough. Blue Barracuda's out front, but he's had to fall. The first two games were each worth one half pendant, with the final game being worth one pendant. The team with the most pendants at the end of the three games moved on, while the other would be eliminated and rewarded a consolation prize. If the teams tied, both earning one full pendant, a final multiple choice question over the episode's legend would serve as a tiebreaker. After another commercial break, the team deemed worthy of entering the temple was introduced to the final round, the temple run. This was an extremely difficult maze of rooms, filled with physical obstacles, puzzles, and traps. Before this final round would begin, Olmec would explain the various parts of the maze to the kids in the simplest way possible. You could start by climbing through the ledges and climbing down into the pit of despair. Race into the laser light room. Unleash the power of the special white laser and you could choose to go up to Medusa's lair or into the jester's court. Turn the wheel to lift the stone slab then race into the throne room. Sit on the throne of the pretender, Dawn, and you could chorus. choose to go up into Reach the room into of the fallen the key, or, or into the treacherous holes of Python. Into the mine shaft. If you escape, you might race down the stairs and back to the temple gate. The choices are yours, and yours alone. The team decides which player will start the run. The first player to enter is given one full pendant, and the second is given any of the remaining pendants won during the temple games. These were used if, and more likely when, a player would encounter a temple guard, a grown adult dressed in costume and wearing a mask, hiding in various rooms in the temple in preparation for the child to arrive. There were three throughout the temple, and if a player encountered one, they would have to give up their pendant. If the player was caught a second time, they would be escorted out of the temple by the guard, and their teammate would begin their run. The second player would have either zero, one half, or one full pendant depending on their team's performance in the temple games. If they had one half, the second part would be hidden in the temple, and the player would need to find it on their way to the artifact in case they encountered a guard, as only a full pendant would allow them to continue. In a scenario where the second player was caught with zero or one half pendant, the team would lose and the game would end. The guards terrified some kids, and many cried after encountering them. Apart from the temple guards, the team only had three minutes to find the artifact and make it out through the temple gates. Each room had a fairly simple task necessary to open the door, but to make it even more difficult, some of the doors were permanently locked, causing some paths through the temple to result in dead ends. During the show's run, there were 15 different temple layouts and nearly 50 different rooms. Examples of these rooms were the observatory, in which the player would turn a sundial in order to open a door, the wall climb, in which the player would have to use ropes to climb a wall and hit a button to open a door, the mine shaft, where players could take an elevator up, break through a rock wall, or find a button, and the infamous Shrine of the Silver Monkey. This room made its way into every temple layout, and despite the puzzle only being three pieces and never changing over the show's run, the kids had an incredibly difficult time putting it together. He's got the face on. Now he's got the head, he's gonna jam it on. But he's gotta get the face on. He's having a little problem with the monkey. After grabbing the artifact, all of the doors to the temple unlocked and the guards disappeared. 
The only thing left for the contestant to do was run out of the temple as fast as they could in an attempt to beat the clock. If they were successful, they won the grand prize, which included a few small prizes and a vacation. If they were unsuccessful, they won a lesser but decent prize. You're not gonna go away empty handed. You're gonna get the set of microscopes for playing. You guys did a great, we gotta go. See you next time for another great legend of the Hidden Temple. Like the majority of the other shows on the channel at the time, the show was shot at Nickelodeon Studios in Universal Studios, Florida. The kids were chosen through auditions, most coming from in and around Orlando, Florida. The children were put through physical tests, history tests, and interviews. The contestants were supposed to be between the ages of 11 and 14, but some that auditioned as 14-year-olds were 15 by the time of filming. After being selected and giving a filming date, the children would arrive to the Universal Studios backlot. The kids were separated from their parents, both taken to their own waiting rooms. The parents would remain in this room equipped with monitors so that they could watch their child compete, but removed from the main studio space as to not influence or distract their contestant. The kids were given their team t-shirt and a pair of sneakers, both of which they would keep at the end of the day. The waiting room for the contestants was filled with video games and toys to keep the kids occupied, as there was typically four or five episodes shot simultaneously. Each episode's teams would complete each challenge before the crew would move on to the next round and set piece. For example, if a contestant were in the first episode to be shot on the day of filming, they would first cross the moat, then return to the holding room and wait for the other four episodes to shoot their moat scene. They would then return to the studio and shoot the Steps of Knowledge, and then go back to the holding room to wait for the other four episodes to shoot their Steps of Knowledge, and so on and so on. This would result in one or two hours between rounds for each group, which is why the contestants appeared to dry instantly between the moat and the Steps of Knowledge. The first day of filming for season one was done with little preparation, resulting in a 12-hour shoot. The moat section was typically edited down to a few minutes in post, but it often took between 5 and 10 minutes to shoot, and on very rare occasions, it took the kids half an hour to fully cross. The moat was also filled with warm water and not very deep. Olmec's story relating to the artifact would be told to the contestants backstage prior to the shooting of the Steps of Knowledge. This was to increase their chances of answering the questions correctly. The teams that made it to the end would also be given a tour of the temple run, with explanations of each room and the ways in which to unlock it. The temple run was made purposefully difficult, and only 26.7% of teams that attempted it succeeded. This was supposedly due to the limited amount of grand prizes that the studio and sponsors were willing to give out. Thanks to highly detailed fan sites, many statistics about the teams and their performances have been calculated. Notable findings are that the Orange Iguanas were the team that made it to the temple run the most, appearing 25 times out of the show's 120 episodes. The Purple Parrots appeared the least, only making it to the temple 11 times. The team also had the least amount of successful temple runs, only completing three during the entirety of the show. While the Orange Iguanas made it to the temple run the most, they were the second worst at completing it, only making it through with the artifact four of the 25 attempts. The Green Monkeys and the Silver Snakes were tied for the most successful temple runs, both having completed the course eight times. The first season of the show was shot in around 10 days, with a total of 40 episodes being produced. One or more episodes would air per week throughout the remainder of 1993 and until May of 1994. A second season was quickly ordered and produced while season one was airing, and the first episode of season two would premiere just days after the final episode of season one. Likewise, Season 3 would begin airing days after the end of Season 2. As there were many different versions of the Temple Run, the more significant changes, such as entire rooms being swapped out, would occur between seasons. Also, slight format changes would occur from season to season, such as what would be introduced by Kirk and what would be introduced by Olmec. The third season would be the show's last, with the final episode airing on June 27, 1995. Legends of the Hidden Temple was a hugely popular show, and many were surprised by its cancellation, or more accurately, its non-renewal. The show produced a total of 120 episodes, so Nickelodeon had plenty of material to air. The non-renewal was reportedly due to indifference from executives, and the channel's standard practice at the time of only producing shows for a few seasons, regardless of their popularity. Legends would continue to air in reruns on Nickelodeon until early 1999, when it would move to Nickelodeon's new sister channel, Nick Gas short for Nickelodeon Games and Sports for Kids. Legends, along with other Nickelodeon game shows, would air exclusively on this channel until it shut down on December 31, 2007. However, since the channel had been fully automated in its later years, a glitch caused Dish Network subscribers to be able to view the channel and its programming until April 23, 2009. Legends would also air during Nickelodeon's Nick at Night programming block, typically early in the morning. The show disappeared from television after 2009, but quickly reappeared in October of 2011, with reruns of Legends of the Hidden Temple airing on Nickelodeon's sister network Teen Nick, as part of its The 90s Are All That throwback programming block. Reruns continued to air irregularly on the channel, 
Over 20 years after it was cancelled, a television film based on Legends of the Hidden Temple was produced for Nickelodeon. Using the same name as the show, the film told the story of three kids traveling to a Hidden Temple theme park, eventually getting trapped inside a real temple and swept into an adventure. Both Kirk Fogg and Dee Bradley Baker returned, with Fogg playing a fictional version of himself and Baker reprising Olmec. The film has many references to its game show source material, such as the Steps of Knowledge, Temple Guards, The Pendants of Life, The Shrine of the Silver Monkey, the team names appearing in many forms, and much more. The film premiered on Nickelodeon on November 26, 2016. Legends of the Hidden Temple was peak 90s Nickelodeon. It was a game show played by kids, watched by kids, and appeared as though it was created by kids. The Indiana Jones-esque theming, large set pieces, and complicated obstacles felt like something a child would imagine, which was exactly the kind of content that Nickelodeon was hoping to produce. Thanks to the show's elaborate theming and deep lore, Legends had the biggest fan base of any game show on the channel, and the community is still alive and well. While it is hard to say goodbye to a beloved show, let alone an entire era of television, it can't be as difficult as the Shrine of the Silver Monkey. Come on, no, just, it goes on, it's not how, nope, nope, other way. Okay, nope, that's...